I'm on the boat. My time in Japan is running out. All the exploring around the southwest Japanese area is coming to an end. But the places I visit, the people I met, and the experience, I've learned a lot. It was a pretty nice experience, but yet, really hard. Just me coming back to the land was just a relief and being able to have this much space around me instead of just having cramped passageways. The food isn't that great either. When they serve you food, it's sometimes either overcooked or undercooked. No in between. You're lucky if you even get food because they are only open in certain times. If you're in the aviation side, then you're in the flight deck almost every single day with a long sleeve shirt, a light jacket, we call those float coats, heavy boots, long pants, and then a cranial, which is our PPE. Then getting blasted by jet exhaust during the summertime. Those ladder wells are really steep. Just imagine the rooms being on the first deck and then your shop is four decks above. Going down the steps is pretty easy, but going up, yeah, it gets tiring. Just look at me, for example. The picture on the left was before deployment and the one on the right is after. Going on deployment every year is a pain, but that's only if you're stationed in Japan. When I hit my next command, I'll be in the States again, closer to everyone I know. Of course, when you're gonna go on deployment, there's gonna be little to no internet while at sea. It's just so crazy that nowadays we rely on computers heavily, especially with Wi-Fi connectivity. Just imagine you're in the middle of the ocean with no service, so no Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all that is left back in the land. It sucks, right? So you have to prepare yourself for a long and stranded adventure. You see this? This is the ship. While living here, every place is very claustrophobic, but you're only limited to a little space, so be careful of what you bring. Of course you have to take the essentials like your uniform, bathroom gear, and sleeping clothes, but I just realized, like, no one ever talked about what to bring entertainment-wise, so you will not be bored and keep yourself insane. So here's a couple of things to bring during deployment, entertainment-wise. I know I talked about it a little bit in the last video, but this is like more in depth since there's a lot of varieties. For me, I brought my laptop with a hard drive that has TV shows and movies. It's a good thing to have because you can have it connected to your TV and have everybody watch. While in the TV topic, people do bring TVs. The ship has TV cables all around the ship and then some TVs installed in certain areas. Like the galley, which is the place that we eat as an example. Every shop has at least one TV, whether they brought it on board or it was already installed. I brought mine to the boat and literally at the end, my co-workers broke it. Well, so much for my free TV. Gaming wise. It's a good idea to bring your Nintendo Switch. You don't know how many people bring that hybrid console around. People are trading games all the time, especially Smash Bros. You don't know how many people have been asking me to play Smash Bros against them. Every time I do, they just get their asses whooped. People have brought their PS4s and Xbox. They usually play like Mortal Kombat or Madden or something. Like I mentioned in the last video, people brought their portable monitors so they can plug it into a local outlet and just open it and game on it. It's definitely convenient to have because you can bring it to the shop, into the birthing, which is the place that we sleep, and in the lounging area, which is usually by our birthing. The multiplayer games that we usually play in the shop is Smash Bros, Mario Kart, Mario Party, Rocket League, and Minecraft. Yeah, Minecraft. If you're not the type of person to game, then you're the type of person who reads books. I have one of my coworkers that's really into inspiration books, and that's why he's so educated when it comes to managing money or even pulling girls. The Kindle is what people usually bring since that is the future of reading today. Or you can just download it on your phone, it doesn't matter. The classic thing to bring is a deck of cards. Especially in the Navy, people play a game called Spades. If you're in the Navy or whoever's joining, it's an obligation to learn how to play Spades. If you're not doing any work and it's a working day, just pull out a deck of cards and boom, you're set for the next couple hours. A lot of people do play in the galley. Other games that we play is Egyptian and Palace. A couple other coworkers brought Uno and Cards Against Humanity. Most of the time it's Uno because my chief isn't a fan of Cards Against Humanity, so he secured that real quick. Should I even mention these? Should I even mention these? Well, I just mentioned them, so moving on. The last thing I should mention is your phone or some sort of tablet. Everybody has a phone at this point. It's got a date, time, alarm clock. You can download movies, TV shows, music, and offline games. I usually watch TV shows, mostly anime, before going to sleep, and next thing you know, I wake up the next day. A majority of us air drag back and forth like movies and a TV show and... That one.
Music is what keeps all of us sane. Especially after flights, it's good to just bust down on Tatiana every once in a while. If you subscribe to Apple Music or Spotify, then they have this thing where after 30 days of no Wi-Fi connectivity, you lose your music until you connect to Wi-Fi. Now just imagine that with no port after 7 months. It sucks. Of course when you want to listen to your own music, bring a set of wired headphones and the main ones that you usually use. Once in a while on the ship, they have this thing where they can't have Bluetooth or Wi-Fi devices on, so that's why it's a good idea to have wired headphones. If you gotta have headphones on, just be careful. Just have one earbud in and just in case of... If you can't find a local outlet around the ship, then you should probably get a portable power bank. It's very convenient to have or when you're lazy and don't want to get up, then just have it by your side and charge your portable devices. Just a heads up. If you want to get swole or you're trying to trim down, then there are gems located around the ship. A couple places with free weights and a couple places with cardio. A lot of people do calisthenics in the hangar bay so they can look towards the ocean and contemplate on their lives. Occasionally, when there's no flights, they open up the flight deck for PT, usually for people who need to run. The weird thing about this is that when you work out, you do lose weight. It's usually because you're moving around a lot during working hours with the flight deck up and down the ladder wells and the gym at the same time. So expect to lose weight and stuck up on the proteins. With all these varieties of entertainment, believe it or not, they do got special events on the ship. Like I mentioned before, they did a Smash Bros tournament where I ended up being second place. They also did a ping pong tournament too. I wasn't expecting a lot of people to be this good at ping pong, but it was fun to watch though. If you're very lucky, then the ship will have a swim call and a steel beach picnic since we haven't hit port at all. The captain of the ship will give all of us a day off, but most of the time I just ate food and played Smash Bros and then shopped the entire day. Okay, Guam was technically not a port. Yes, there was a beach to go swim, but we stayed in the pier side the entire time and that's basically where we all hanged out. And drink. Deployment is a very important role in the military, but doesn't mean it's gonna be fun. Some ships are afloat for around 9 months without a port. You may think that 7 months isn't that long, but it is. Just put yourself on a mini boat for 3 weeks without anything and see how you last. Then when you're done with deployment, you can't wait to see your family or go to your own bed if you're single. And boom, you're on your phone, on a computer, or watching TV catching up with the rest of the world. A lot of fun memories here, but... I can't stay in Japan forever. My next command, I'm going to the state of California in a desert, cow manuring smelling place. Yeah, that's not gonna be fun. If you're in the Navy and you're going to Japan, be ready. Enjoy Japan as much as you can and prepare for the constant deployments. Unless you're on shore duty. Well, there you go. I know everybody is different with this, whether it's like reading books, watching movies, or even playing games. Everybody has their own way to entertain themselves, so they should have ideas or prepare themselves for their deployment. And if you don't bring anything, then I guess you can hang out with your workers. You're gonna go insane.